Hello, I'm starting another weekly vlog. I don't really have a reason to do this one other than it's the end of the year and I felt it would be a good idea. This is exactly what I said I wasn't going to do in my last video, but I do have this idea that I might try to read seven books in seven days. November was a hard reading month for me because I, I think I got very into this idea of hitting 100 books by the end of the year and like the first week of December I've been reading a lot more because I was like no no just ignore that like don't worry about it but now that I've read more I'm like oh maybe I can hit it. I have to read 11 books in the next 20 days in order to hit 100 which is not is not like out of the realm of possibility for me and my reading like if I'm on a roll that's I I can definitely do that but the question is am I shooting myself in the foot by telling myself that I am going to do that I don't know we'll see so basically it is saturday morning I had sort of a rough week last week in terms of work and stuff and next week the beginning is gonna be sort of rough, but then I'm hoping to do some fun. Oh, she emerges. Next week, the beginning of the week is gonna also be a little bit rough, but then I'm hoping, like it's the holiday season. I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not traveling home for Christmas this year, unfortunately. Um, but I, I need to like plan out some fun city holiday activities to make it not just like more of the same. Cause I think if I just, plow right through New Year's at this point. I'm gonna be really burnt out and sad. But in the meantime, let's just talk about what I'm reading. So basically, as you've seen before, I am marching through a couple of different essay collections. Most of these I've talked about in previous videos. I won't talk about them a lot unless I actually finish them this week, but I am still reading They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us. Um, and I think I'm definitely gonna finish this this week. I only have like 50 pages left. I'm also reading Jackson 1964, which I talked about in my last reading vlog. And I'm only about halfway through this one. Yeah, I have 150 pages left of Jackson 1964. The other book that I'm currently working on. Uh, oh, hi. So the audiobook that I've been listening to is Argo which is how the CIA and Hollywood pulled off the most audacious rescue in history. So you probably already know about Argo because it was a blockbuster movie a couple years ago. It's basically about the Iranian hostage crisis and how the CIA extracted six Americans from Iran. I'm about a third of the way through. I'm finding it very interesting so far. I think it might be one of those rare books where really the movie ends up being better than the book. I, I haven't hit anything yet where I'm like, oh, they couldn't talk about this in the movie and like this is like adding a whole bunch of like context or interest. It is Saturday. I do have the day off and I do sort of like to start something fresh on Saturdays. So yeah, I think I'm actually, <laughs> despite all those books I'm in the middle of, I think I'm gonna pull something new off my shelf. I'll do that now and I'll see you later. I'm uh, picking a book for this weekend and this is sort of what I'm working with. This isn't the shelf that I normally film in front of and you can tell it is very messy. The only shelf that's actually organized here is this one because number one we have all these fun cards in front of it from my, my friend Alice. Hi Alice. This shelf is basically just my my music books and my my poetry and apparently I don't really read any of these because they're not constantly pulled out and stacked in random ways. Anyways, so what I'm sort of trying to decide between, oh, some heartworm, very good. What I'm trying to decide between is I have like all these new books down here and I sort of want to do Annihilation. I feel like this, this was a movie very recently so probably heard of it, but I have heard that the book is even weirder than the movie and like very good. So this, this one I sort of want to pick up. I also recently bought Solutions and Other Problems. This is really heavy because it's both hardback and then it, it has like graphic novel paper inside. So ugh, that's a workout. Um, but I really like Allie Brosh in general and she just came out with this book. But I think this is actually going to be quite heavy 
topic wise, not just weight wise. Um Yeah, and then and then I have Franny and Zoe, which I just talked about in my video with Milena. I was thinking of rereading it because it's been a while. And that video made me wonder if I actually like the books that I like. And then there's also The Golden Gate, which is another old favorite. Whoop! I don't know what to do. I'm feeling very indecisive. I could also read any of these other books. <laughs> ah! Okay. Well, I guess you'll know what I pick when I check in. I'm editing our video for tomorrow with me and Melina, which is exciting, but just wanted to mention dog, and also what the heck is happening outside? That's wild. Hello. I just wanted to check in because I am 50 pages into Annihilation. I don't normally buy books for their covers, but I thought this one was just so pretty and I wanted to read it, but... I, I am happy that I got it because it's just a beautiful object, you know. So I am really excited about this book, actually. I, you know, have seen the movie Annihilation, but I sort of thought that the book might be a bit different. And that's definitely true. Technically, the setup is the same. So basically, there are four scientists um, who are entering into this mysterious Area X. Previous expeditions have gone in and um, come to untimely and mysterious ends, and there's a lot of mystery around um, sort of the organization that's that's governing these expeditions. Also, um, so you're sort of in the point of view of the biologist and her, you know, experience of the expedition. And I will say that this this book goes a lot further than the movie in exploring ideas of like the limits of human understanding. It's it's quite a different experience than watching the movie, and I'm enjoying it a lot. There's also there's also this big aspect of an unreliable narration, so you're not entirely sure you can trust the narrator, and everybody seems to have their own instructions and perceptions of what's going on around them. It is a very interesting book. I think it falls in the category of either maybe like, I mean, it's like a speculative novel, but it's sort of sci-fi-y or horror-ish, um, which are both genres that I don't read very much. So um, I'm enjoying sort of like, you know, pop, pop it into a different genre that I'm not used to. Um, but I also thought I'd check in because my friend just brought me some latkes, just a couple. It's it's for, you know, Hanukkah. So this is lovely. I don't have applesauce, but I do have sour cream. So I think I'm going to eat these with sour cream and some apple cider. That's almost the same as applesauce. They smell really good. So I'm really excited. All right. Hi. It's 530 on Saturday. It sort of feels like it's time to go to sleep. It was just one of those days where it never got bright out at all. So I feel I'm feeling a little bit tired. I blew past the halfway mark of Annihilation. I don't know. It's it's sort of walking this line where I almost wish it were weirder. Like it's it's like a little bit too weird to feel like the like linear plot line is fitting with the weirdness. Like I, I just sort of wish it had gone off the rails and been like, ah. but I have heard that this is this series is like one of Jeff Vandermeer's more approachable works. Like it basically just gets weirder from here. So um, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see how much I end up liking this in the end, but I think overall I might try out some of his other work. At the moment I'm sort of oscillating between a three and a four star and uh, normally uh, ending will push me in one direction or another. So we'll see. I have food in my fridge, but I really want to order takeout. And I can't decide. I cracked and got Indian food. <laughs> Hopefully enough for two meals. I'm also watching MASH again, because why not? I don't know how this is my, like, pandemic show of choice, but here we are. Good morning, mon petit... I don't know, French. 
here we are. I'm here to report that I'm done with Annihilation. And when I was talking yesterday about how like, oh, it's weird, but maybe not weird enough. That's wrong. It's plenty weird. It's very weird. Um, and I sort of loved it. So I think I'm going to end up rating this guy a four stars. Yeah, I, I'm sort of interested in, now that I know this is a trilogy, how the other two books are going to fit in. I think based on sort of the themes of this book, it in its own way ends quite conclusively. Not, not that things are really resolved and you really find stuff out, but maybe that's not the point of the book in the first place. Today, unfortunately, I actually have to do a lot of work, which I'm not super pleased about, um, but I am planning on sort of it's all writing, it's all working from home. So I'm planning on doing sort of like a two hours on, one hour off type of deal so I can feel like I still have a Sunday. Right now I'm, I'm doing some palette cleansing, reading some essays, uh, but again, I'm not committing to reading seven books this week because that's crazy, but I did happen, just happen to pull off all of the shortest books from my bookshelf. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, if if the spirit moves me, I might pick up one of these guys that I can finish quickly. I mean, it's not like I'm not planning on reading these books at some point in time. So, you know, the, the fact that I am just happening to think about reading all of my shortest books at the end of the year, it's inconsequential, right? Anyways, so these are all um, books that are less than 200 pages. The one that's sort of calling to me out of these right now is uh, Arcadia by Tom Stoppard. This is a play by the guy who wrote, wrote Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead, which I think is uh, much more famous than this one. But I basically don't know anything about this going in other than the fact that it has not, I don't think any time travel element, but it's, it's like set in an English manner in the 1800s, but also I think it has some modern day bits as well. I'm, I'm not really looking for anything too heavy right now, and I don't think this would be very heavy. So I might, I might try to get in some reading this afternoon of this guy. So anyways, one down, X number of books to go. I have gotten exactly 30 minutes of work done today, which is great. It's not great. I am just working on this thing right now that I have such anxiety over. It's writing, and for some reason I can like really gun it in lab. I can just go in and work forever and be like, yeah, I'm doing it. But when it comes to writing, my brain is like, K -k 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 -k. but it is like three o'clock, which means it's going to get dark in an hour because winter. Uh, so I'm going to take Michelle to Central Park. Yeah, hopefully that'll be a good like brain clearing exercise. Unfortunately, the worst kind of Sundays, like I haven't been relaxing, but I also haven't gotten anything done. <laughs> oh. Anyways, you could, this is my OOTD, it's my Pikachu pajama top, and my I, I skinned a carnival bear sweater. I think at some point I bought both of these with some sense of irony, and now I'm just, I'm just past irony into not caring very much. <laughs> Anyways, you ready? You ready to go out?
Asha. Come here. Oh, that's my bag. I thought that was a cat. I was like, what the? Anyways, so we just went on a nice long walk. We were out for like almost two hours and then I came back and I was like, oh, I'll just get organized and then I'll start working. And then I took like an hour long nap. I don't know what's up with me this weekend. I'm just like very tired. Um, I think I'm I'm changing tactics and I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, give give me the rest of the evening off. In terms of reading though, I um did start Arcadia, uh, by Tom Stoppard, and I'm like thirty pages into this, which is like a third of the way through, so <laughs> making good progress. Yeah, so basically this is, it, it seems sort of like a piece of domestic drama. It's mostly a comedy. Basically it's going back and forth in between a family who's living in this British manor in the early 1800s and um, some like humanities researchers going through their papers in the 1980s. Honestly, like this more than anything has made me miss like being able to go to the theater, which is not something that I actually did before COVID, like let's be real. But anyways, I, I just feel like this is a play that would be really fun to watch live. Oh yeah, I, I've gotten well past halfway through Argo. I was listening to it while we were out on our walk. Uh, it's mainly made me want to read that, that like very comprehensive history of the CIA. I think it's called Legacy of Ashes. So yeah, I'm sort of like disconcerted. It went from being light out to being dark out while I was napping. It still really freaks me out when it starts getting dark before 5 p.m. I'm like, where am I and what are we doing? And like, like you get up at 7 and that's what daylight saving is supposed to be for. It's supposed to be to give you more morning time, right? But if you get up at like 7 or 7.30, the sun is just rising. You're like... Where is my day? Anyways, I'm gonna stop complaining about this. Okay, talk to you later. Good morning. It's Monday. I have finished Arcadia by Tom Stoppard. I finished this last night. I ended up really, really, really liking this play. I think it definitely would be better as a play, like as, as a thing that you watch rather than a thing that you read, but I did enjoy it overall. I, I really sort of liked the themes of it, uh, even though some of the, I guess, real story elements actually fell a bit flat for me. I think despite that, it's, it's a four star. I do feel like elements that were a little bit on the nose for me um, would, would have been like perfectly fine, you know, as the actual play. It, it has a lot to do with like how we know what is knowledge, what is time, how do we investigate the path, how do we interpret what's come before or something. It, it just hit on a lot of themes that I found very interesting and made me think a lot. So um, yeah, I think a four out of five. I don't, I don't think it's a five out of five, but it is, it is like based on the subject material I don't know. It's going to it's going to make me think quite a bit for a while. And sometimes at the end of the year I'll go go back and like adjust my star ratings, so bump up some four stars to five stars if I've been like coming back to them and like thinking about them a lot and bumping some five stars down to four stars if at the time I was like, "Oh, this is revolutionary." But then I I don't like continue thinking about them. I'll be like, "Oh, okay. Well, maybe that was actually a four star." So, we'll see. We're quite quite towards the end of the year already, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to make the appropriate adjustments here. But for now, it's a four star. So that does mean that I read two books over the weekend. Short books, but it did happen. I'm just gonna, you know, see if I can keep this momentum going during the week. I did start to read um, Solutions and Other Problems. Oh my god, this is heavy. Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Brosh. And I am about a hundred pages into this. It's 
it's a graphic novel, basically, so that's not actually, you know, a, a lot. Hyperbole and a Half is like a blog that I read in high school, uh, and I've always really enjoyed Ali Brash's sense of humor. I think, as I might have mentioned before, I do know that she gets into some heavy topics in here. Um, there have been some big things in her personal life in between her last book and this one, which I don't know. It's sort of weird to call something that happened in somebody's real life a spoiler, but I'm not gonna say it. So if you want to look it up, look it up. If you if you do have triggers that you need to be aware of, I would recommend looking it up for this, even though, you know, you might think it's just a humorous graphic novel type thing. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing today. I, I've been like buying too many things for myself and being like, it's the holiday season, I'm not paying for plane tickets. But I was sort of thinking of getting myself like a sad lamp, like like one of those sunshine lamps, because I think that might be what's going on right now. Like, it's it's just it's supposed to be light out right now, but it's not. I have my full lighting setup going here, so we'll see. I need to make a decision about that and just work. Okay, I'll talk to you later. I'm just eating cheese for lunch. Reasons I love being an adult. <laughs> Guess who's actually cooking? Wow, wow, wow. By cooking, I mean sausage and pre-made pierogies very good oh there she is good morning yuck good morning it's Tuesday yeah it's Tuesday I feel like I haven't done anything very exciting this week I've mostly been hanging out inside my apartment so sorry if that's not very interesting to watch but there is supposed to be a snowstorm tomorrow, so I'm actually quite excited about that. I really like when the city just shuts down and you can wander around to the middle of the street and stuff like that, but we'll see if that actually happens. So yesterday night, I finished Argo. I ended up giving it a three stars overall, which was expected. I liked it. There wasn't anything really like mind-blowing about it, but it was entertaining. I think I mean, I would like to read more about the CIA, I guess, but I say that at the end of every book I read, so God, God makes some decisions sometimes, and I think it's probably not actually the top of my priority list. I also got quite a bit farther in Solutions and Other Problems. I freaking love Ali Brosh. Her humor is just amazing. As with any sort of collection, some of these are hitting better than others. Uh, but I think that this will probably be a five star for me. So what else is going on? Nothing else is going on. I, I need to get to work. Okay, talk to you later. We're having a tea break. What's up? I bought some stolen. What, what says Christmas spirit like bread covered in sugar with inappropriate fruit chunks? Hello. I actually went into work for a little bit today like for, for some in-person stuff. So I actually got dressed and I feel so much better. It actually works. I should do this every day slash probably the like seeing people and talking to people helped in general. But anyways, I'm feeling pretty good. It is Tuesday night and I just finished Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Brosh. It's definitely a five star for me. I feel like her drawing style has actually gotten a little bit more involved since her last book, but um, she's she's still this weird little alien bug person, so you're not you're not gonna miss out on that. Um, it's it's just like very funny and then also very insightful about mental health and you know, be, being a person in the world despite tragedy and everything else that happens. I have a bit of a book hangover from this, actually. I am four for four now, so, but I'm losing momentum in general. I don't know if I'm gonna like push myself to get to seven books this week because I don't want to ruin reading for myself. Like, there's no point, what's the point in that? Um, but I do know, at least for the next two days, I'm set up pretty well. On audiobook, I just started My Sister the Serial Killer, which, you know, made the rounds on book two. It's definitely, like, a big, big 
book release and I'm late getting to it, but it is rather short. Um, it's, it's like a four hour audiobook, so I fully expect to finish that tomorrow or the next day. And then also, um, one of my essay collections, They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us, I have 50 pages left. So I haven't made any progress on that this week, but I think I'll probably just sit down some morning and knock it off. So the goal is in sight for me here on this challenge, but I'm, I'm going to try to not like really cr crank in on it. You know how you, you just, anyways, it's like 830 now. So I am going to make myself some dinner slash heat up leftovers from yesterday and drink my beer and maybe not read anymore tonight. I think I'm just going to like watch some TV. It'll be good. So see you guys tomorrow. Hello. It's Thursday. No, it's Wednesday. And I just finished my fifth book this week. Fourth book? What is time? I just finished my fifth book this week, um, which I was very much expecting. I was very close to the end of this essay collection. And I'm not going to go into detail here because I've already talked about this one extensively in other videos. But I think overall, it ended up being a four out of five stars. There were some essays in here that really affected me. Like, I, I think I will be going back to reread some of these, but overall it just didn't quite hit that five star rating. So that's what happened today. I also, I got a lot of packages. I'm pretty sure these are all Christmas presents that I impulse bought my dog, but I'm, I'm just gonna unbox them here anyways, cause what else do you want out of a vaguely holiday reading vlog? Consumerism. Let's do it. So of course I got my dog a holiday sweater because who am I? I hope this fits. I feel like she's buffer than this. Like, I feel like this will not contain her, but we'll see. I don't know what this is. As, as I mentioned, I'm trying to break up with Amazon. I don't think I've ordered anything from Amazon recently, so I hope this isn't a Christmas present that I'm accidentally opening early. Oh my god. I need to get a less scary knife for this. <laughs> I'm so weak. <sighs> this is definitely a Christmas present. It's for my parents. And they sent me... <laughs> yes! I don't, I don't even know. I freaking love Toblerone. I'm so excited. Okay. And then... This is another one for my dog. I'm pretty sure. From me. Not my parents. Oh, that was not dramatic at all. It's a dog bed. Yes, I got my dog another dog bed. She has three? No, this is her third one. Oh my god. Ba bam I don't know if this is big enough for her either. Apparently I don't know what size my dog is. So that's it for today. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm about halfway through My Sister the Serial Killer. That one is very good. I think I'm oscillating between a three and a four star. Um, I think if I had not heard so much about it on book two book related media, uh, it would definitely be a four star. But since I, not, not that it was like spoiled for me, but it, the story doesn't feel, I think if I'd read it when it first came out before I'd heard everything I've heard about it, the story would feel much fresher in general. Um, but as it is, it's still really entertaining. Uh, basically it's about two sisters that live in Nigeria and, um, one of them is a serial killer, which <laughs> you can probably guess from the title. And the other one, the, the main character, cleans up after her, basically. Um, and yeah, it's very good. If you haven't heard of it before, where you been, baby girl? This message has been brought to you by my top knot. I'm just past the point of caring what I look like at all in these vlogs, apparently. It's relatable content. Don't mind me as I just hug this dog bed forever. <laughs>
reaction shot? <laughs> you, you're not interested? Oh, <laughs> what a good girl. <laughs> you don't look super comfortable, huh? Does that make it better? <laughs> what is this mood? Mission accomplished, I guess. Microwave nachos, but uh, make it fashion, right? Hey. It fits, huh? Who's cute? bought this milk frother at the beginning of quarantine because I was being bougie, but we're going to try something. Gr green tea latte at home? Question mark, question mark. Okay. Maybe that much? Maybe a little more. Maybe like that much? Moment of truth. Ooh. That's looking like a thing. Ooh, that's actually really good. Welcome to Thursday night. So I read My Sister the Serial Killer. It was very good. I'm gonna give it four stars overall, I think. I think that in the end, it was a really great character study. It really delved, delved? Delft? Really delved into the relationship between the two sisters. But overall it was quite short, so honestly it was the very rare book where I really wanted it to go longer, to explore more. But I still really loved like the nugget that we got out of it overall. Sorry, I feel like that's a very short wrap up, but I, I am starting to feel a little burnt out on books right now, which I sort of knew was coming if I was gonna try this. So I am currently six for six, and I think I'm ending my reading vlog a little early, which is fine because it turns out that I have recorded over an hour and a half of footage this week. Like, I'm not even worried about editing that. It's just the fact that apparently I've spent an hour and a half this week talking to myself in my room is a little alarming. Anyways, I was considering picking up convenience store women for a uh, read that I can do tonight and tomorrow. Um, but like, I'm, I just have to go with my intuition here. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to push it. Like I am still in the mood to read right now. It's just, I don't necessarily want to pick up another like bite-sized guy that I can just rip through and like get through another story. You know, like if you do too many of those in a row, they, they each start losing their impact, even if they are really great books. So we're, we're calling it quits. So I'm back. Hello, it's Friday. I know I said I was gonna wrap up yesterday, but then I just like randomly decided to get Tweet Cute out of the library. So I got that ebook and then I started reading it and then I stayed up really late and then I woke up early this morning and kept reading it and I finished it. So here we are. So basically Tweet Cute is not my normal genre, but it's a YA contemporary romance, I think, technically. Um, it's about two teens who are running their family's restaurants, Twitter feeds, I guess. Uh, and they, they get into a feud and, you know, classic setup where they're, they're feuding with each other online, but then they're, you know, getting to know each other in person. Ba -na -na. I don't know. I feel like I just needed a good fluffy palette cleanser and it really fit the bill for me so I did really enjoy it I gave it a four out of five stars um yeah I don't know I just felt like the stakes felt real it did do that 
young adult thing that I don't like too much where the parents are really like immature and uh, incompetent, I guess, which is great, cool, but whatever, it's part of the genre. I feel like it, it might have been a somewhat accurate you know, portrayal of what it's like to be a teen growing up nowadays with the internet and everything that comes with. Not that I didn't have an internet as a teenager. I'm not that, I'm not that old, but it was, it was a different place in general. I guess I'm, I'm actually officially wrapping this up now. Uh, I added it up and oh, across seven books, I read 1,764 pages. Um, that's not counting uh, pages that I read out of books that I didn't finish, so it was even a little bit more than that, but one of them was a 500 page graphic novel, so I feel like it all evens out in the wash. Um, that is very good for me, but it ended up being a really good reading week, all things considered. I mean, I read across so many genres that I'm normally not likely to pick up, I guess, but it was, it was sort of great. I, I feel like it kept me interested and uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to do this do this more intuitive reading in the future as well just like pick up what's speaking to me as they say anyways thank you so much for coming along sorry if this is horrendously long I'm gonna try to deal with it and like chop and paste I'll, I'll talk to you next week bye